Hello and welcome to this video on why the ending of Finding Nemo is very wrong. The ending of Finding Nemo is typical. Nemo is reunited with his father, the supporting characters have a happy life and there's no seeming lasting harm to any of the cast. Of course the environment, predators and humans are not included in these happy endings. The problem with this is that Finding Nemo should never have ended this way. In fact, we can go all the way back to the beginning of Finding Nemo to figure out that this should have gone a very different direction. As Nemo, Coral and Marlin are all clownfish and then enemies and lay eggs. Everything at the beginning is correct enough to set a scene and story where the fish follow their natural habits and biology. This is where the movie should split if it was not set in some weird alternate reality. The first thing that should happen is a number of the other beta male clownfish should be around, and these are missing from the movie. They are meant to tend to the eggs of the breeding pair at the top of the social hierarchy. They also should have been the ones eaten by the predator, but for now that is less relevant. After coral is eaten by the predator fish, and this is something that could happen in nature, we should see something somewhat unique to clownfish. What is important to hear, and what is unique to clownfish, is that when coral is eaten, marlin should have changed. Not in mentality alone, as we see, but in sex. With clownfish, when the female dies, the social hierarchy shifts around, with the previous breeding male now turning into a breeding female. This is where those previously mentioned beta males become relevant. They would then begin reproducing with what in this case was Marlin, but should perhaps now be called Marlene. The largest juvenile, which is the beta male, becomes the new breeding male of the pair. This is our very period of rapid growth. Since we have no other males to speak of in Finding Nemo but Nemo, it stands to reason that an Oedipus moment is about to happen. Marlin is now Marlene, and fish being fish, Nemo is the only male. If you are not aware, Oedipus is an old play in which a Greek man named Oedipus is supposedly killed by his parents as an infant to avert a prophesied war. He does not die, and eventually returns and marries the queen and fathers several children. Those children surprisingly did not have any deformities, since the queen was also Oedipus's mother. This also later gave rise to the Electra Complex, which involves daughters and fathers. Is it possible that this is why Game of Thrones became popular? It went from Alabama cousins, to fish parent and child, to siblings. It's a fact that we could arguably go even further back in Finding Nemo, and how it should have ended very differently. Unfortunately, this ending is far more permanent than what we've already described. Nemo should be dead. That little flipper is a death sentence for any fish. Although we do not know this while Nemo is an egg, we do see how once spawned he is handicapped. That little flipper will not just affect his ability to swim. There are four kinds of fins. There is the caudal fin, which is found at the end of the tail, which provides thrust and a certain controlled movement direction. Pectorals, which act as a rudder and hydroplane to control yaw and pitch, but also break the fish's movement. Pelvic fins, which control pitch, and the dorsal fins which control roll. By having a little flipper, Nemo has significantly less control over his body, must work harder for the same results, has reduced burst speed, and should have a significant problem maintaining an upright position as his body will try to pitch to one side. The problems of that one flipper lead to many other issues. These problems will include hypoxia, this is due to a reduced supply of oxygen to the body, anoxia, and lactoacidosis. Anoxia is the complete loss of oxygenation to the body, and lactacidosis is the buildup of lactic acid. This is simply due to the fact that his body is working that much harder and is unable to move through the water properly. Because he can't move properly, he gets reduced oxygen. Because his body has to burn more energy and oxygen in order to have at least the results we observe, 
then he's going to wind up burning what oxygen he has available. And this will cause a certain amount of anoxia and lactoacidosis. By having an impaired flipper like this, we'll note, or should have noted at least, if the movie had maintained some semblance of physics, a significantly reduced burst speed. That there should have been a huge change in the nature and number of his red blood cells, and these would have then had effect on how his body would have responded to things like adrenaline. That he would have had serious issues with acid buildup in his body, due to simply moving around normally, involving the increased production of more lactic acid, and that this would cause a significantly higher chance of mortality or dying in him, and this is even more true again when he was caught by the dentist. In short, we should have seen a recreation of either an ancient Greek play, not an upbeat family-friendly film, if this really did adhere to the what and how of clownfish in the real world. More than that, if we had seen it playing out in the basics of how the fish would live in the physical world, and the observable anatomical changes, we shouldn't have even seen Finding Nemo, as Nemo would have long since died from one thing or another. In longer terms, Marlin should now be a female, Nemo should be dead, and if not dead, certainly reproducing with Marlin. This is a more realistic depiction of what and how clownfish are in the real world. Of course, Finding Nemo also led to a huge increase in real world poaching of clownfish, and that is yet another problem that this movie gave rise to. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you have below.